introduction to QuickBooks Pro 2015 and we'll be demonstrating how to use QuickBooks in educational institutions in Jamaica. What is QuickBooks? QuickBooks is Intuit Inc's set of software solutions designed to manage payroll, inventory, sales and other needs of a small business. The software's features include marketing tools, merchant services, product and supplies, training solutions, just to name a few. You can also define QuickBooks as bookkeeping software that combines a variety of accounting processes into one user-friendly system. The software's primary function is to alleviate, or to alleviate the use of multiple tables, spreadsheets, and tracking sheets necessary to document and maintain accounting tasks at a company. Accounting figures are also easily reconciled for tax purposes with QuickBooks. Software was developed by Intuit and can be customized based on the needs of the business utilizing the software. What can it do for your institution? QuickBooks saves time on everyday tasks easy to create estimates and invoices. You can enter customer information only once and have it for the future. Quickly move from one task to another and basically it helps you to see the big picture at a glance. Gone are the days when you have to hunt to files and Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or other spreadsheets. You can easily customize QuickBooks for the way you work. You can see key customer and in this case students and vendor or suppliers information at a glance. Also you can see how your business is doing. QuickBooks accurately manage your financial data. QuickBooks takes care of the math and the formulas. So you don't have to do the calculation. QuickBooks does it for you. It's easier at tax time. More accurate financial reports. And it's very easy to learn and use. QuickBooks accounting software is smart enough to wait, work the way you think and whenever you install QuickBooks or start a new company file there's an easy setup interview that gets you started right away. QuickBooks makes all of your everyday financial tasks easy. Now let's look at the functions of QuickBooks. Multi-user access. You can print checks, pay bills and track expenses. Track sales, sales taxes, customer student payments in this case. Track time and job cost automatically and build them to your customers. Record deposits. Create business plans and sales or expense forecast. In this case it would be your budget. Track hundreds of thousands of inventory items, customers or vendors. 
creates estimates invoicing and billing it works as features designed for your industry detailed customized reporting journal entry general ledger bank reconciliation cash book financial statement those are all functions of quickbooks now let's see how these key features or functions will benefit your institution or let's look at the key features that will in fact they have some benefit to your institution uh, money management QuickBooks Pro comes with features designed to assist institutions in managing their money. One aspect of the program allows users to enter the due dates and payment information for all recurring bills. Expense billing. There may also be expenses that are incurred in relation to some students, which is later billed to parents or students. These may be small purchases in relation to the students travel expenses, meals, or even educational materials that the student should pay for. These can be purchased by the institution and be seamlessly billed to the student without have to be reconciling that account manually. Regardless of the size or type of expense, QuickBooks Pro maintains a feature that allows users to record each one. In addition, expenses may be saved according to the students, giving users the benefit of not having to reconcile them manually, as I said. Invoicing for fees. QuickBooks Pro provides the time-saving benefit of tracking the student fees and automatically creating receipts and invoices at the touch of a button. <laughs> invoices and vouch or vouchers can then be electronically sent to parents or students via email. The program also allows students to be billed individually or in large batches for instance, at the start of an academic year, you may have 1,400 students that you need to give a voucher. Or you may have 1,000 students that you need to give a voucher. QuickBooks can actually generate the voucher and it can be either sent to the student's electro parents electronically so they can use that voucher and make payment at the bank and bring relevant copy back to the institution you can design your voucher so the bank will automatically stamp that copy to be returned whenever that student returns that voucher is then updated in quickbooks as a payment being made so this function may come in particularly handy and billing multiple students for the same service or item. It could be graduation, it could be a field trip that students need to pay for. It is the same thing. QuickBooks can handle all of that. Reporting Users of QuickBooks Pro are able to create a variety of financial reports. These include year-over-year -year income streams I mean year-over-year -year income sorry expense trends and budgets furthermore each report can be exported into Microsoft Excel spreadsheet format and sent electronically via email so I'll be doing a live demonstration on using QuickBooks to track auxiliary fee so we have here 
our extensive students list in spreadsheet format and I had first name and last name basically these are all the students who are enrolled at Margaret Stanford's high school and the name of that school is fairly fictitious certainly here in Jamaica and it has only been used for demonstration purposes so this is our extensive list of students it's about a thousand students there we have it these are all the students who are enrolled and this is the manual system that was being used prior to Margaret Stanford's acquiring QuickBooks financial software and they want to convert their manual data to electronic or to QuickBooks data so they can do their invoicing directly from QuickBooks and to do their collection for fees for the upcoming academic year so let's say all of this would be done prior to the start of the new academic year so first thing we are going to do is to set up our QuickBooks company file okay so now we will be basically setting up our company file first thing we are going to do now is to select start setup and we are going to use Margaret Stanford High School and Industry Select help me choose and we'll use other iron man. Business type we'll use non profit. and business address to St. Margaret's Way Kingston Jamaica
going to see Jamaica there. We have to select other for the country and the state will basically disappear. I don't need to select state. Have a phone number. That number is purely fictitious. Could be somebody else's number, but that was not intentional. This is solely for the use of or for the purposes of training. So we are going to select create company. So what we have here is name industry business type. The EIN would be basically the similar to the TRN that we use here in Jamaica but uh, QuickBooks does not support Jamaica and other Caribbean territories territory, sorry so we just have to use it the way it is however um, accounting is global so the same principles will apply to the US those same principles will apply here so because of how global accounting is same principles that apply anywhere in the world will apply here it's the same double entry system it's the same way you record most things because it's, it's global bookkeeping is global so we're going to select create company Some time can take up to a minute depending on your speed of your computer. So let's give it a few more seconds. and it's coming up now There you have it. You are all set. So we're going to select start working.
Okay. So we're going to look at the chart of accounts that was provided to us by default. We are going to add our chart of accounts. So we are going to make all of these accounts inactive. And we won't be using these chart of accounts by these accounts. So we want to make these accounts inactive to avoid the clutter in our chart. So I'm going to add new accounts that we definitely will be using. So the first account I'll be adding is tuition income. And you can always create a sub account. So let's have a broad income account and have tuition income as a sub account. I'm going to create another one called. So we select save and new. I'm going to create another income account called other income and save and new well for the purposes of this demonstration we will basically be using Some major accounts such as the accounts that we have created and the bank accounts. I'm going to create bank account. You select account type. Okay, so we'll be creating the bank account now. And this is the account that school fees will be. Large too. So let's say it's a NCB account number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we are going to select save and close. We have our income account. And our bank account. What we are going to do now is to basically import customers our students at least So we want to get the students in the system now, so we are going to, let me show you how I got here, basically go to customer, go to customer center. Uh, so basically what you do is to right click anywhere here and select add or edit multi customer jobs, so you select that and what you will get is basically a spreadsheet looking farm 
and we'll be doing some copying and pasting from Excel. So I'm going to bring up the students list and I'm going to be copying the first names first. Just got a time saving tip, but we are already saving time so by doing this. So we will ignore that. You just need to copy using Ctrl V, Ctrl C to copy and paste using Ctrl V on your keyboard. Control V to paste. We will put in no further information here. We do us working with first name and last name. However, the name is a required field. <laughs> so, QuickBooks will not allow you to import unless the name is there. Because the name is basically what QuickBooks will use to identify each student. Name should be the combination of first name and last name. Okay, the fact that QuickBooks requires uh, the full name to be in in one section of the form, we we'll have to put the name, the first name and the last name together. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use a formula to do so. So, we have the formula here. It's called, here is it, C-O-N-C-A-T-E-N-A-T-E, -E -E. concatenate, right? And that is the formula. Open the bracket. And put the cell that you want to merge with the other cell, but ensure that we use these oh, these quotations here. Put the space to ensure that you get a space between the first and the last name. We're going to drag our formula down, and everything should merge. Basically, this is outside of QuickBooks, but the better you are at with Microsoft Excel, easier it can be working with QuickBooks because they work hand in hand. You may have to import data from Excel to QuickBooks, or you may have to export data from QuickBooks to Excel and make modifications. So it's very important to learn Excel as well. So we'll be adding the names to QuickBooks now. So going to copy and paste. We copy and paste. There we have it. We're going to select save changes. Take a 
little while. So basically we have imported 1004 customer records and the system is telling us that one record of errors and need to be fixed before they can be saved. I'm going to select OK and look if this is something that we can fix. Well it is saying that the name cannot be blank. I guess there was a blank cell. So let's save and close. We don't need to fix that. Can just close. Alright, so there we have our students. All our students. We don't have to manually enter in them. We are going to show you how to create mass invoices for these students. So we are going to select, we are going to right click. <coughs> We can do it from the customer option at the top. Select customer, customers, and select create batch invoices. We select OK. And we are going to select, select all. You can create a billing group called for instance if you were only doing this for grade seven, you could call it grade seven. So let's say this is grade let's say this is grade 8 to 10. Right, so basically you have a billing group right there. Select save group. Then you select next. This color we need to create the items that we are going to build. So we're going to select non inventory part. This will be tuition. Let's say ancillary, auxiliary fees. Just auxiliary fees. So now we're going to create this item 
as a non-inventory part and we are going to be using this item as an item to be linked to the tuition fees account and the tuition income account and let's say the tuition is seven thousand five hundred or better yet let's create a, an account called auxiliary fee and make it a sub account of income Alright, so we are going to select OK. Alright, there we go. Also, what could be added while creating this item is to have the year for which the fee is applicable. But we can always go back to the list. Go to the list. Can always go back to the list and change this item. So we're going to say 2014-2015. That's the academic year. You can have a message. You can say, please make deposit to NCB account number or you can say you may make deposit you may make payment by deposit right and we will select next that quickly it's now creating the batch so basically what QuickBooks is doing now is to create a thousand and four invoices in less than a minute just think about how much time it will take you just sit down and create a thousand and four invoices individually and the kind of resources it will take in terms of human resource.
there you go basically you have two options if you do have an email address for these students or parents with one click of a button these 1004 invoices can be emailed to the parents however if not you may select print to print all these invoices at once you can basically select close basically you'll see all your students have a seven thousand dollar balance you can always go back and print at a later date and it QuickBooks basically assigns an invoice number automatically. However, what I did not do is to change the date on the invoice to be a 2014, but it is okay because you should get the point of what I was trying to do. Alright, I going to go back to the same create batch invoices I'm going to use the same billing group this is where you would have selected the date Are the correct date because this was intended for the 2014 2015 academic year, so we're using historical data. However, this is fine if you have not created any invoice at all in QuickBooks, it will use one as a default number. However, if you wanted, for instance, to have a customized number, you could basically create the first invoice with that number in QuickBooks, then QuickBooks will continue to count based on that number. Okay, so that is how you would create the invoice. We can actually look at one of these invoices. There you have it. Messages there. You can look at the print preview. Alright, this is what the invoice would look like. When we import when we did the import, we, we should have included the bill too, but we can always go back to do that. So we are going to add more information. The same name that we have for a customer, we are going to have that for bill too. So it is printed on the invoice. So we are going to go back to customers go back to the customer center we're going to go add and add or edit multiple customer slash job what we are going to be doing now is basically adding bill to and this would basically come on the invoice once we have done that Gonna copy this name this again and we're just gonna update by pasting. And we can save our changes.
Okay, and we have the same error that we had earlier, but we can ignore that. Select close. Alright, and I'm just going to verify. Okay, there has been a slight error in terms of the customers. But we are going to fix that. So we are going back to the news. Basically, I have to try and do a sort, and then we we'll do it again. We're gonna sort by the first name and copy. So we'll go to add our edit multiple customer. And what we are going to do is to sort based on first name. And we are going to overwrite Okay, so we are going to be pasting and we're going to verify that information is correct. seem to be having some issues problem we are having here is the names that we have imported were basically misaligned so we are having this customer in the line of another customer but we are going to be fixing this problem and I'm going to show you how to get around this problem in case this happens when you try to do something like this. Uh, you can clear the color.
Okay, so let's look. I got our first color. Okay, so we are back at our first column and we are having the problem of a mix up. So we are going to look back at our spreadsheet. And this is the problem the data was not copied from the top so we're going to copy the data from the top and we'll see how it goes it should solve the problem so we're going to do it again Right, and that seems to be it. So we have to ensure that we copy the correct information to QuickBooks. And as usual, we have one record that we will have to leave. We could fix it, but we don't have to. We can always do that later. Just want to look at the invoice to ensure that the billing information is there. You could always add further information such as address and all of those things here but in this training we will not be going so detailed all right so there we have it we could do a preview there it is basically this invoice will be given to the state to the students this could be formatted to represent a voucher we at microbooks we offer that level of customization where we can actually 
change this document to be a voucher in the sense that the students will take it to the bank and the bank will stamp their copy and the students will return the school's copy. We could format that for 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 at, the, at our client's request. So um basically that's it for the invoicing aspect. Alright, so if we should look at our chart of accounts, you should now see an accounts receivable account here created automatically. And it is showing a balance of 750, $7,530,000. And that is tuition. Total ancillary fee for that for the 2013 for the 2014-2015 period. So that is the total ancillary fee that the school expects to collect. Seven million five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So let us say that we have some students because what we are doing now is to show how we treat the payments so let's say that we we have received some payments from these two students in full on the 10th of September 2014 2014 we're working alright so the 10th of September 2014 these students on the 10th paid in full. I want to demonstrate part payment and full payment. So first let's demonstrate full payment and we are doing that for only 10 students because this is demonstration purposes and based on the limited time to do this training I'll be only doing it for for 10 so to to receive payment you go to customers receive payments and you select the name of the student the first student is Gabriela London and here it is Gabriela London QuickBooks basically shows you the invoice that is outstanding and the amount that is outstanding the only thing we need to do is to tick and it will basically show the payment amount what QuickBooks basically do is automatically calculate payment if you do not enter an amount QuickBooks automatically calculate it that the amount you selected is the total that is going to be paid If you don't enter an amount, people assume that the customer is paying the total invoice. So, 
So, we select the invoice and QuickBooks automatically enters total amount. And we're going to select save and new. We are going to move on to clear Jonathan. And basically, the same applies. Here, however, what I did not do in the previous transaction is to enter the receipt number. In government accounting, accountability is key. So you are to ensure that even if these amounts are made by lodgements, that receipts are done so I am going to look at the payment method you need to know where this where did this payment go let's say the student paid in full by bank deposit or if you want to say direct deposit whichever word suits you more So if we select direct deposit, you will see this transaction as direct deposit. We can do a receipt. Let's say we're going to use 2001. Well, let's use 2 for this one because we did not enter a receipt number for the previous transaction. When I select save and new. And we are going to move on to Alia Levy. Or Levi. And the payment method there comes up as default. You just need to enter the receipt number 2003. And this amount is paid in full. We are going to ask QuickBooks not to show us this message because we have already read and understood what it is saying. So we are going to say do not display this message in the future. We won't see that message again. So we are going to select save and new. We are going to move on to Sadie Jackson and this student have also paid in full receipt number 2004 save and new well let's say the student paid in cash at the office we're going to say cash payment and we select that or we don't have to create cash payment here but it's already here so we just select cash you can always add other payment methods that are not here so we select cash whichever method you select will turn to green right if you have selected a credit card it will prompt you to enter the card information However, that is not available in Jamaica. So,
I have selected cash. Save and load. Next student who have paid in full is Riley Julian and basically select the amount 2005 for the receipt number because these students would have would have been recording these transactions in sequence as they occur we're going to select save and new I'm going to be using a check for the next payment received and this person is Kylar Isaiah and full amount received 2006 for the receipt number and this person is basically paying by check so check number will basically come up as reference so we can have the check number and the receipt number so we can say CHQ one two three four five. You can say REC. So it's check number that receipt number that. They have both records. You have a record of the check number and you have a record of the receipt number captured here. Select save and do Let's just look back at this transaction. Right. Select save and new. Uh, next student is Nora Eli and same apply this person paid by cash Two thousand and seven, and we select save and new. Next student, Sarah Aaron, and basically, I'm basically going to show you the names list that I'm using. This is basically the names list. I, I try to have it being displayed without blocking what need to be seen. Okay, so I have a 
much better screen to look at now because what I did I just pull in this sidebar here to have more space to work with so that was Sarah Aaron and she has also paid in full and we're gonna select save and new move on to Haley Charles and it is two thousand and are we at seven? Two thousand eight we are at now. It was two thousand eight for the receipt number, reference number, and we use this as a direct deposit and save and use. I'm not sure if there was a mix up with the receipt number in but I'm sure persons will understand. We are at Sarah Aaron. And Sarah Aaron is actually is telling me that Sarah there are no unpaid invoices for Sarah Aaron. That is due to the fact that we have already done that one. You should go to Ailey Charles, same thing you could say to us. We're going to move on to Kaylee Connor. And we're going to record it as a direct deposit. And let's use receipt number 2010. And we're going to select, save, and close. Basically, what you will see there is that we have undeposited funds of $75,000. That was collected on the tent. So we have that funds. Are those funds holding some some in house and some already in the bank account? But for accounting purposes, you would still need to deposit them where the cash book is concerned. Because you have to account for what you actually have in house. Only way you can say I'm confident that it has been deposited. If you have called the bank, get all the proof and then make the entry. So what we are going to do is to make the entry. Or the adjustment to the cash book. The bank may have those funds that were deposited directly. For the cash book also need to have them. What we are going to do is to make deposits. We need to get these funds into the cash book. 
So what we are going to do is basically going to basically select make deposit we can make deposit from here I right click it and select make, make deposit basically show all the all the receipts that need to be deposited we have two receipts here without a reference and we are going to correct them and that's the one for Gab Sarah Aaron and Gabriela London I'm going to correct I'm going to close that and we're going to go back to customer receive payments we're going to look for those receipts And that is it, Gabriela Landa. It should be 2006. And other one is here, here, and 2001. And we're going to select save and close. We should go back to make deposits. What we can do is to close this. And we can also go to banking and select make deposits. And basically, all our receipt numbers are there. All our information is there. So we know what receipts we are logic. Basically, we need to select can tick off our receipts but you will not have a receipt in the first place for these direct deposits if you did not confirm that the funds were in the bank account so basically I am going to select OK what if this check is going to take three days to be cleared we can post this check for a future date so we don't have to necessarily deposit this check put these checks as a batch we can unselect this check and select just the cash that you basically get value for instantly and let's say this is the 10th of because you want to get a current balance and a cash book account the checks that are not clear, you don't want to basically have it as being available in your cash book when it is not yet available until three working days. So let's say we select the 10th of September, which is the day that we're large, are received. 2014 and you can have a memo you can say deposit and 
NG Direct Card Deposits. On 10th of September 2014. This I select save and close. Alright, basically, we'll have that amount in our bank account and we'll have just one transaction here that was not deposited. We're going to deposit it now, but we're going to post it for a future date. We're going to select make deposit and we're going to select the check, but we're going to select three days down the line. So we're going to say this check was deposited on the 10th so the check will be cleared on the 15th or let's say the 16th I'm giving it three clear days working days to be clear so the 16th of September and we select save and close Right, so you have no funds undeposited and all the $75,000 is in the bank account. So we're just going to double click and we will look at the transactions in the bank account. You won't be seeing these deposits as individual deposits. You will be seeing them as a big sum on your in your cash book. If you want to see them as individual deposits, you would need to change the settings where you receive payment and it goes directly to a particular account. Right. You can go to preferences to do this, go to payments, and you uncheck use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account. And you still uncheck that, select OK. It looks may need to close all its windows to apply this change. Once that change is applied, we are going to do this one a little different. So we are going to record students who have paid in part. We are going to go to customer and we are going to receive payments in part. Basically I will be demonstrating how to treat part payments. And because the change at because of the change I just made, it is system is going to be asking where do I want the funds to go to? So I am going to receiving the payments. First one is Cecilia Maverick. And let's say Cecilia Maverick had paid. Well, not let's say because it's there in the spreadsheet. We have the data here. 2,500. And this receipt is 2011. And the date is
date for this transaction is the 15th of September. So, 2011, receipt number, a reference number, and this payment was made by way of direct deposit. And we're going to send direct deposit directly to our bank account. So you don't have to go back and manually deposit them. This may work better for some persons. So deposit to NCB account. And our next move is to select. Save and new. Basically, the system is saying that there is an underpayment of five thousand dollars. We leave this as an underpayment. You can make a note. Students or student will pay balance October. And we select save and new. So let's look at next student would be Kate George. And she basically paying three thousand two hundred by cash, and this cash payment will go to undeposited funds. Two thousand and twelve receipt number would be. We're gonna select save and new. Next student is Kinley Tanner. Paying five thousand dollars. And that was a direct deposit, so we we'll select the account directly. It shows that there is an underpayment of 2500 Save and new. Basically, we need to put in the date. Two thousand and thirteen, not the date, the reference number. Two thousand and thirteen. Save and view. And we're going to move on to Jayla Jax. And basically, same principle applies 3000. And let's say this was paid by 
a check and let's say this check was received was a check from a third party so you could say um, Ministry of Labour DNS check number one two three four the memo is there that that's for checks that were paid by a third party a memo needs to be posted you know that the check was received from a third party however some third parties may receive may want to receive a, a receipt may, may want a, a receipt this same receipt can be sent to the third party or um, you could basically do a receipt you could do a manual receipt or have that third party name and the manual receipt So we're going to select save and new and move on to Geneve Payton and that's a thousand and two thousand fourteen the reference number and that's a direct deposit as well. Save and new. Alexandra, the next student. And that's six thousand dollars. And that is cash. It will go to undeposited funds. And six, the receipt number actually, this should be two thousand and sixteen. Uh, basically. Keeping a track of the receipt numbers is a bit difficult. However, the main thing is that you have a basic understanding of the principle. So, uh, 2016, that's the reference number. And we're going to select Save and New. And the next customer is Elisa Amir and balance is there. Let's say payment of six thousand five hundred was made. Reference number two thousand and seventeen and direct deposit save and new let's say the next student is Kylie And she paid 
2300. So, reference now will be 2018 and it's a cash payment goes to undeposited funds. And we have Olivia Omar and let's say payment amount is three thousand three hundred. Reference number is two thousand and nineteen, and it's a deposit. Save and new. Move on to Giselle. And this payment is one thousand five hundred, and it's direct deposit. So Two thousand twenty. Move on to Aria Javier. It's four thousand five hundred. And it's number two thousand and twenty one. That's direct deposit, so we select direct deposit. And Save a new next customer. Elena Elliot five hundred. And basically, it's 2022, we have a receipt number. Save and new direct deposit as well. We have two more. Enter when I 
is 4500 and this one is cash it goes to undeposited funds 2023 and the final one Adivin Ryman and 3500 and that goes to the bank account a direct deposit 2024 so there we have when you select save and close we have basically recorded list of students who have paid so we are going to look, go to going to go to reports and look at our income and expenditure or profit and loss only thing there would be the fees should be 7.5 million but if we go to our balance sheet we will see that we have 109 thousand dollars in our NCD account we have 7.4 million dollars down from 7.5 as outstanding and we have 13,500 as undeposited funds this is what our balance sheet is telling us we are going to select close and we are going to go to the home screen and we are going to look at chart of accounts we are going to look at undeposited funds shows all the funds that are undeposited undeposited funds have been basically increased with these amounts that we have just entered here you have them that is how we have arrived at the 13,500 so we are going to go to make deposits and so selected make deposit will show all the customers who have paid by cash earlier that need to be deposited so accountant or bursa or whoever is responsible for the financing will have to ensure that all these funds are deposited so um it is very simple i've demonstrated earlier with the full payments you just select all the amounts to be deposited and you select okay to deposit 13,500 to the bank account so we are just basically going to select save and close to record this deposit and let's see let's change the date to the 17th. So save and close. Okay, so we're basically going to look at our NCD account now. Here you see this big deposit, this 
this big deposit that was done for the student who have paid in full and these small deposits for the persons who have directly deposited to the bank account and this 13,500 that was received in office and lodged on the 17th so there you have it Thank you.